The resynthesis module allows you to bring back liveliness into otherwise static one-shot samples or to transform your samples into something completely new and original. Resynthesis analyzes your sample and gains detailed information about spectrum, pitch, and time. You can think of this as if Backbone is X-raying your sample. Any of these core audio features can now be manipulated freely. You can change the pitch without affecting the speed, or you can change the speed without affecting the pitch of your sample. This ability is also called time stretching, but Backbone goes way beyond conventional time stretching. With purity, formant, and inharmonicity, you can gain back control of the timbre of your sample. And with dedicated modulations, like velocity and key follow, you turn a once static sample into a lively, playable instrument. And the customizable freeform resynthesis filter gives you further surgical control over the sound. The resynthesis module offers dedicated modes for the tonal and noise layers of a decomposed sound. You can switch the resynthesis between the tonal and noise mode at any time. You can resynthesize a sample without decomposing it in advance, but the more faithful you decompose a sound, the more freedom you will have while resynthesizing it. Decomposing a sample gives you full control. Let's decompose a tom drum sample. We place the cutoff at 500 Hz and set the sensitivity to around minus 6 dB. With these settings, the tonal part sounds warm and full, and the noise part sounds bright and spiky. This is exactly how we want it. Let's press apply. The tonal layer plays the body and the noise layer the attack of the tom drum. Let's go to the sample module of the tonal layer, analyze its pitch, and move the root key to the corresponding key in the C3 range. The noise layer has no pitch information, so we can leave the root key at C3. To avoid the attack changing with the pitch, we set the pitch key follow of the noise layer to 0%, and we deactivate the pitch bend. The tonal layer still plays longer or shorter depending on the pitch. Let's activate the resynthesis for the tonal layer. The progress of the analysis is indicated by a small bar below the mode selector. The resynthesis in tonal mode uses the original spectrum of the sample, which can be changed with purity and inharmonicity, for example. After the sample has been analyzed, the length stays the same for all pitches. However, high-pitched notes sound unstable. Let's activate the high-definition mode. It doubles the frequency resolution of the resynthesis, and this stabilizes the sound. The high definition mode requires more processing power. In our case, this is not a problem because we can set the cutoff frequency during decompose to 500 Hz. The cutoff frequency of the decompose is automatically transferred to the max frequency setting of the tonal layer. The resynthesis calculates the spectrum only up to this frequency, which reduces the required processing power substantially. Since Backbone does this automatically, you usually don't have to worry about this. The high definition mode is optional and does not necessarily sound better, so you should decide from case to case if your sound benefits from it. Let's move on. We activate the resynthesis filter and set up a smooth curve for damping the high frequencies. This reduces the high frequency artifacts even more. You can use the filter shift to find the sweet spot for the resynthesis filter. We leave the filter key follow at 0%. This way, the filter does not move with the played pitch and you can play the tom drum across the whole keyboard. Let's use the formant filter. Formants are groups of frequencies that do not move in the spectrum when changing the pitch. Many acoustic instruments have formants that are characteristic for a certain type of instrument family, because the formants are resonances that are produced by the shape and material of that instrument. With normal sample playback, the formants move with the pitch, which results in an unnatural sound. The formant filter allows you to shift or keep the position of the formant. For example, with formant key follow at 0%, 
the position of the formants will be kept for all pitches. For further refinement, Formant Scale allows you to adjust the intensity of the formant filter. We reduce the formant key follow to around 10%. This preserves the character of the body at different pitches. When the formants are fixed, low frequency noise and rumble can become audible. This is where low cut comes to help. Low cut considers the current frequencies in the sample. For example, if you set this parameter to 10%, those low frequencies that occupy 10% of the overall energy in the spectrum are removed. We set low cut to 5% and the low frequency thump is gone. Now let's put purity into action. Purity either increases or decreases the level differences between partials, which results in a cleaner or noisier sound. By setting the purity velocity to around 30%, we get a cleaner sound for low velocities, and a noisier sound for high velocities. This contributes to the liveliness of the body of the tom drum. You can change the character of the body drastically by adjusting the inharmonicity. The inharmonicity compares the frequency of the original spectrum with the frequencies of a strictly harmonic series that starts two octaves below the root key you set on the sample page. This is another reason why the pitch analysis and the correct root key are important. The frequencies of the original spectrum that have an offset are either aligned with or further shifted away from the frequencies of the harmonic series. Let's leave this for now at 100%. Let's look at the noise layer. The resynthesis in noise mode uses the original spectrum to shape a white noise signal. Since there are no single frequencies in a white noise signal, purity, inharmonicity, and low cut cannot be used in this mode. To add some liveliness, we set the position shortly after the attack and drag the sample start velocity range all the way to the left. Now the attack becomes spikier the harder you play, which contributes to the liveliness of the attack of the tom drum. Let's listen to both layers together. We can go back to the overview page and adjust the speed of both layers. The acceleration allows you to speed up or slow down the playback. Speed and acceleration work closely together. For example, if you start with the original speed of 100, an acceleration towards faster or slower playback will not affect the attack. Acceleration can even freeze the sound, like this. Another way to freeze the sound is to use the Hold Last Spectrum option. When activating this, the spectrum at the sample end marker will play for as long as the amp envelope lasts. Finally, we adjust the velocity to level on the amp module of each layer. Our tom drum sounds much livelier, and the ability to play it at different pitches turns it into a real instrument. Thank you for watching part one of the Resynthesis how-to videos. In the next part, we will use the Resynthesis module to transform a crash cymbal into a hi-hat and a rim shot into a xylophone.